What does a renewable energy future look like? What characteristics will it have? What are the important elements 30 years from now? So let's just put it into a time frame. Electricity will be free. We will be generating most I need, at least at the residential level for sure. We'll all have electric cars and we'll joke about that we used to go somewhere to fill up the car. Uh, so I think my aspiration for the energy sector in 20, I mean, like 30 years from now, would be that energy would be something like air that we breathe nowadays. Uh, it's, it's, going, it's going to be everywhere. Uh, and it's some, some places may be still in pockets of uh, dirt, but mostly clean. Uh, and also it's available uh, at any point in time. I actually wouldn't say it's free, I'm an economist, so I wouldn't say it's free, but <laughs> it's available uh, widely. From, uh, from my point of view, in 30 years, uh, I think, uh, uh, in nearest 30 years, I can agree with Sohail that uh, the energy may be something like internet, it may uh, become nearly free. What we expect to see is a, a sort of consumer-focused electricity sector, one in which you go and from the, from the big old state-owned enterprises running everything to uh, a situation where we have empowered consumers and they are part of the electricity market. The particular challenge, obviously, for the Central Asian nations is that they need to figure out a way of incorporating renewable energy sources and generation capacities into a landscape where they have so much access to fossil fuels and the potential for cheap energy. In Central Asia in particular, for instance, how do we get to a situation not of free electricity but just the existence of adequate electricity? I think that uh, one of the necessary steps uh to get to free energy should be uh, in Central Asia especially privatization of the generating facilities and privatization of the uh, transmission nets. There are of course good arguments to be made and were made by some of our donor agencies to say that we cannot at this point discard all our existing practices and all our existing resource bases in order to leap to the new technologies. That economic development, that economic progress must be a process that takes a long time and a great deal of planning. It's not something we can switch on in a day. Others, however, suggest that without the imagination and without the determination to make those changes happen fast, we'll never reach the point that we need to reach in the time frame that we have. Um, but what happens very often is that there is an announcement sometimes of this really interesting solar project or wind project by a bank and it is celebrated in the newspapers. But that same bank often is funding other projects that are not as clean. How do we go about having this more difficult conversation of when to stop investing in dirty energy? Okay, so it's a transition that the banks are undergoing right now. We've been speaking to a couple of banks, international banks as well as national banks in certain countries and they're seeing the value of investing in uh, renewable energy, sustainable technologies. And it's going to be a slow transition, but it's happening for sure. You can feel the undercurrents right now. As, as an institution, um, it's, I think we recognize internally that it's also important to have that diversity of opinion. There are many cases where it does still make sense to, to invest in, in things that do have CO2 emissions. You know, I have a colleague who says that the remarkable thing about coal is that coal just doesn't die. Um, coal power, power, you know, power plants will live and live and live and continue to live. Uh, coal plant will not die. The same argument went on in the UK when slavery had to go because that was a free labor that never dies. Generation after generation they grow children but that had to go. So I think we have to also take that into context, that acceptability. So coming back to the question Monica raised, you know, if you want to have a steak for dinner, you don't send a vegetarian to shopping. That's the principle. So I think while we are talking about decarbonizing of economies, we have to decarbonize society, development banks, politicians. We had a fascinating discussion, not just with the panel, but with the audience on the floor, who are very engaged with the idea that perhaps energy in future might be free. 
My first question, whenever you say when will the energy become free, it will never be free. It was free back in the Soviet times when the infrastructure such as power infrastructure was built by the state. I don't think you would object to that, right? Whenever we say global warming, clean energy, clean lifestyles, we should always take into account the real conditions and circumstances of every country's development. Our country is a coal-fired energy because uh, we've got coal reserves for 500 years, and it is in these circumstances that we are talking about renewable energy. Right now, you know, in Kazakhstan, uh, energy, dirty energy is very cheap right now. And we are discussing that uh, green energy for us will be very expensive, and there is no chance to, uh, to increase percent of ener renewable energy in Kazakhstan with, um, without increasing prices. So, uh, what kind of future you think is possible for Kazakhstan? Cheap, dirty energy or, uh, or uh, expensive green energy and why? I think the cost of renewable energy depends on many factors, uh, including the production cost, uh, financing cost, uh, logistics and transport and all these associated costs. Uh, so it's really the matter of how much market we have for renewables that would in turn affect the cost of renewable energy as well. We have access to so much solar and wind potential here, which is effectively free. But how do we translate that from a free resource from nature into a free resource for the consuming public? That transmission process is where the costs come in, and that transmission process is the challenge of putting in place infrastructure, which is why our experts from the donor organizations and the experts at country level need to be able to create new partnerships and new ways of implementation and imagination for generating their future energy needs.